I think we're here today because COVID is real. I share the sentiments of many of my Republican colleagues that have expressed the thanks to the frontline workers asking questions. I want to look at the last few months. COVID's really real in my state. Michigan's the 10th largest state in the country, and we were third in the number of cases for weeks. We were third and remained there until this week in the number of deaths. We managed to move to fourth place two days ago, which is not a number anybody wants to be. I, my family alone, a cousin woke up at, with 104 temperature and was dead that afternoon. There are people still dying every single day. I have lost someone I've known. Sunday, Monday, a brother, a brother like friend to me, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we hear the scientific experts, yourself, but Dr. Fauci, other scientists around the country saying to us, if we don't listen to them, we could begin to see well, we're going to see a return. You call it a, a, a dark winter. I call it, I don't want to see any more spikes. I don't want to see anybody else die. I am losing too many friends that I know and people across the country are. So I want to focus on an area that's not your area of expertise, but it's mine, car safety. We expect our cars to be safe. And we expect car manufacturers to be responsible and making sure defective cars aren't sold. And if they fail in that responsibility, we hold them accountable. If an engineer in a car company realized a model had serious defects and warned her management about that, we would all think she had done her job responsibly. And if management ignored her and our committee found out, I will bet you right now we would be having hearings. And if Americans died driving those cars, the companies would be sued and they would be charged with criminal negligence. In fact, several years ago, before my time, this committee investigated airbag defects and vehicle safety. At the time, the subcommittee's ranking member, Dr. Burgess said, there is no room for going slow when it comes to safety. And certainly, deception cannot and will not be tolerated. Dr. Burgess was right then. And our, our car makers have to be accountable. But what I'm concerned about is that we aren't applying these same standards to coronavirus. And I want to learn from what's happened so we keep that dark winter you're talking about from happening. It seems to me, Dr. Bright, you acted the same way the auto engineer I mentioned should act. You identified serious problems and then suggested fixes when it came to diagnostics, N95 masks, other equipment and medicines. Is that right? That's true. And Congressman, we still have those challenges. Do you believe if your suggestions were implemented, lives would have been saved and the severity of the pandemic might have been lessened? I believe lives would have been saved if we had proper medical protective equipment for our healthcare workers. Yes. So people died because you weren't listened to? People died because they didn't have appropriate protective equipment to save their lives and protect them from getting infected. The problems aren't limited to just ignoring your advice. The American people are confused, given mixed signals, and quite frankly, some die days to simply deceived. Let me give you an example. There was a visit to the CDC on March 6th, and at that visit, the administration said, anybody who wants a test will get a test. Was that true then? There still are not enough tests. So even this week, as we're being told, anybody who wants a test can have a test. Is that true in the United States of America? No. In fact, all the experts say we're doing is only a small fraction of the tests we need to do to reopen safely. I'm running out of time, so let me ask you about vaccines. We keep being told by the White House that we've heard very uh, very soon, quick numbers, a matter of months for that vaccine to be developed. This is your area of expertise. You are a top immunologist in the world. Was there any scientific basis to suggest in March that we'll have a vaccine in the next few months? There's a lot of optimism. There's a lot of hope. 
but that doesn't make a vaccine. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to make a Will vaccine. Will we be able to vaccinate people in the next few months? It's very unlikely. Thank you, Doctor.